Hail and hello everyone. Welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, a Midgard Musings production. Join me, Jesse, your host, as we discuss random heathen related topics and various other things in an attempt to find where, if any, heathen worldviews can be applied. You can support this podcast by clicking on the Linktree link in the description or show notes. You can also follow me on all of my social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and become a patron on Patreon. Join me every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central on all major podcast streaming platforms, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and many, many more. If you wish to have your voice heard on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, you can dial in to 615-671-9832. Thank you all once again listening to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Enjoy and hail to you all. Yes, yes, yes. Hail to you all indeed, ladies and gentlemen, all over Midgard. Thank you so much uh, for joining me and soon to be us today here on this uh, fine, fine, cool, finally cool autumn day, evening, morning, wherever you are, whatever time of day it is. Um, I'm projecting it to be a wonderful autumn season and a crisp and refreshing winter. Um, I'm not the only one. I think the Farmer's Almanac actually predicts that it's going to be one hellacious winter for the the North American continent. Uh, And I welcome that with open arms, quite truthfully, because this summer has been disgusting. Um. So yeah, back in the old uh, normal studio space, as it were, which is also my office, um, to record this episode. Last week, we had a really nice get-together, uh, the, the Middle Tennessee Heathens Park Moot, uh, which ended up at the Case and Trailhead um, Pavilion, one of the pavilions there at the Case and Trailhead. Uh, turned out to be really nice. Not as big of a turnout as we were expecting, but still you know, enjoyable, pleasant, nonetheless. Got to meet some New people got to um, record the last week's podcast with Patrick, which was awesome. Uh, if you guys haven't checked that out, just go back through my catalog and uh, you can see what it is that we talked about. Um, but it was a great time. <clears throat> Couldn't have asked for you know much better weather. Um, and yeah, so don't know what we're going to be doing uh, for the next one, because um, as we go into the month of October, we're going to be pretty busy between um my family our tribe and the uh raven moon hearth folks hosting their um shadow mood event here in a couple of weeks i'm going to be there my wife and i will both be there uh we're actually uh definitely going to be there on that saturday um but we are contemplating coming and arriving on friday night to camp with the folks there uh and then camp saturday night so we might even be there all weekend so if you are coming out to shadow mood be sure to say hi uh details for that will be down in the description and the show notes of this podcast so check it out if you're thinking about um coming out for that i will be personally there to do rune readings rune castings by the mound um on the property there is a mound there and due to the nature of the celebration this is going to be a um you know a a celebration for the right around the winter nights Uh, as a matter of fact at the time that shadow moot takes place we will be one week into the um, past, I should say, one week or so past the Winter Nights um, historical rec- uh, recalling or recollection of when Winter Nights was celebrated in uh, Northern Europe and with the Scandinavian people and some other Germanic tribes. Um, so my tribe will be celebrating our Winter Nights the week before Shadow Moot, and then Shadow Moot is going to be the um, public sort of uh, Raven Moon Hearth hosted public event for said thing and they're going to be doing a uh hell bloat which if you want to find out more about that um check out again the description for the shadow mood event where the chieftain of their tribe uh greg strong 
talks a bit about you know the history behind hell the deity or goddess or Jotnes, Jotun, um, as well as the, the realm so there's a lot of cool information surrounding about that i almost suspect that we'll be talking more about that here on this podcast in the coming weeks so definitely check back here every week um because i'm sure there'll be topics that we talk about got some great guests lined up um over the next at least couple of podcasts today's guest um is also a, a chieftain slash Gothi himself um, we're going to be talking to trevor uh who is a um again go the chieftain uh for a group out in the dixon area of tennessee i believe find out more about they uh their you know their group and you know kind of what they're about but he's uh he's got some history i guess in um logging or or cutting down trees and we're gonna be talking a bit about that type of activity that type of work when it comes to like i don't know maybe ship buildings and uh, or building the building of ships and and find out more about trevor but trevor is very young and uh ambitious um I got a chance to meet him, and as I recall, is either his wife, fiance, or girlfriend, partner, um, at the last Raven Moon Hearth event in June, which was the Suna Bloat event. I got to read the runes uh, for both of them, so um, a bit of a test, as it were, to see if the if the readings that uh, were done back then have resonated. So I hope to talk a bit about that, and then we might talk a bit about something that uh, has been on my mind. I actually had something happen this morning at the time of the the recording of this podcast so earlier in the week for you folks um, that are listening and watching right now um, but I had something happen where I kind of you know um, had a had a meaningful pendant of mine um, break and um, very simple sort of thought of like oh well if it's you know if it broke it then it's you know it it just wore down and you know it was, it was time to get a new one but some of the other things that go through one's minds when you uh, suffer a damage or loss or, or an injury of something that meant something to you, a trinket, a symbol, that sort of thing. I did want to talk about that um, today with, with Trevor, if we're, if we find ourselves moving in that, you know, direction. So without further ado, again, uh, be sure to, if you are listening and watching this podcast um, on any of the platforms that you listen and watch on this, uh, watch it on, I should say, then be sure to engage comment share like upvote whatever the thing does to to help boost the uh algorithm to be like oh yeah by the way i need to you know get more people out on this um so again thank you all for your support let's bring in uh trevor and see what it is that we get to ramble on about today all right well change of plans as things tend to go um in life you know you know you, the best made plans right you don't always um you don't always get what you plan for and that's okay you make do um yeah you make do otherwise you know you make do the best that you can with the circumstances that laid out in front of you and uh the circumstances that are laid out in front of me today um are to i think yep are to um move on without without trevor for this week and uh like i said that's okay um we're gonna rock it solo today and have him back on here at another time for another episode no harm no foul not a big deal um so we do have things to talk about or i do have things to talk about at least um and you have things to listen to me talk about so um i mentioned before i uh stepped away for um you know to bring in uh trevor that i had something happen to me this uh at the time of of this podcast being recorded the morning of today so um sunday night probably it was actually early early monday morning it was still dark but i was you know in bed um waking up monday morning and um i wear around my neck all times um a couple of things i have um a bone an elk bone that um myself and other members of of our tribe have 
that was uh, part of a gift from uh, J.M. Olison, Papa Olison from uh, Fjallvatir Workshop. Um, I have a a uh, from from the Disney movie Moana, um, the the fish hook that Maui um, is known for. I have that hanging around my neck. Uh, that was actually just like a gift from um, a little girl that my wife used to to babysit. Um, her name is Evelyn, and she uh, she thought I would like it, and I did, and I still do. Um, so I wear that. Um, it kind of like I don't know. I'm not Polynesian. I don't appropriate anything like that. But I do have an affinity to to the ocean because growing up as a kid, you know, and for for the most of my childhood, I lived near the ocean. I was, you know, 10, 15 minutes away from the Long Island Sound. I was, you know, within an hour or so from the Atlantic Ocean. I grew up going to the ocean and being in the ocean or the or salt bodies of water, the sea, you know. So anyway, there's 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 that kind of connection. And, and it means something to me to have that sort of representation of it. And it was an, it was a kind gesture from her, you know, and I thought, oh, that's sweet. So I had that. And then on the same uh chain that the elk bone uh pendant has uh has been on um before the elk bone was there i had a rune uh, a tiwas rune um as a reminder and as a sort of dedication to tear way back in the early days of midgard musings when i was first starting to really push the brand and and and, and try to um you know make make this whole thing uh work you know, um, I was doing a lot of uh, YouTube live streams and and other sorts of, you know, videos. Um, but I, at one point in time, I had uh, actually a couple points in time, I got what was called or what is referred to as swatted. So for anybody that's listening or watching who are maybe gamers or no gamers that stream their games, um, swatting is a is an activity that is is very very dangerous it's it, it can get people hurt um and even um you know have to have their lives risked um so basically what it is is you know people make fake 911 emergency calls blocking their numbers they can't get traced and and they call in to the 911 emergency dispatch saying that some sort of you know unspeakable crime has happened at the location of the person who's streaming there's there's people out here that'll you know uh grab you know your your ip addresses and it's and it's a very um nefarious tactic to um you know have police show up while you're streaming so you you know you inevitably get you know law enforcement showing up to your house um potentially putting you in handcuffs and, and because they're, they're responding to what they think is a brutal, violent crime. Um, to the, the two times that it happened to me, um, a 911 call was, was made um, saying that me, you know, so somebody called in and said, um, I've, I've, I've stabbed my grandmother or I've stabbed my, um, yeah, it was, it was, one was, I, I, I stabbed my, grandmother another one was that i uh that i i killed my wife or my girlfriend or something like that it was my girlfriend the first one i think and the second one was my grandmother um and you know they were they were part parts of of the first one was um the first time i was swatted obviously i didn't know what was happening all i knew is i was sitting streaming i wasn't even gaming or anything i was just talking um, about heathenry related stuff, you know, and, and, um, the, uh, the cops showed up banging on my door and I'm like, hello. And they, they, they came in cause the door was unlocked. My dogs were going crazy. My wife wasn't even home at the time. So they came in, you know, cameras are on. I'm like, I didn't, I didn't stop the stream. Um, cause I didn't know what was happening. I just realized that, you know, I opened my door, they like come out, open up the door and, uh, you know, I got flashlights, firearms everything pointed my face in my own house saying you know this is this is the police and everything so not you know needless to say it freaked me out they explained to me what was going on and I, you know they look around they do their job and i was like look man I'm, first of all i'm married and second of all what is even going on and they explained to me what it was and i was like oh wow and all this is you know 
not inside of the camera, but my, my, my stream was still going. So there were some bits of audio that, that translated into the, to the stream and people are like, Oh shit. You know, like there were people were worried. So anyway, um, I came back on the stream. I'm like, I'm here. I'm guy, you know, guys, I'm back. And, uh, I learned a bit more about what that was. So I thought, well, this is, this is odd. You know, I'm like at the time I was, I mean, I'm, I'm still, I'm not even a big presence here, you know? So to think that somebody took the time and, and the effort to go all, go through all that for somebody like me streaming, doing what I was doing, I'm like, you're, you're not going to get much out of this, you know? So it was like, it was, it seemed like a very pointed and very focused attack on me and as a, on, on my safety. Right. So I, uh, I thought, oh, well, it's, it's, you know, it's a one-off. A week or two later, um, you know, and I, I went down the whole uh, security measures, you know, like make sure my IP was, was master VPN. I was, you know, doing all of the technological precautions, taking all the techn tech technological uh, precautions against having something like that happen again. Well, you know, you get one if you get an IP address one time you save it you know you got it forever so they they did it again presumably the same people that did it the first time only this time I knew right I, I was streaming doors knocked and dogs are going crazy I go, hello you know and it's, you know obviously my wife wasn't home for that either um thankfully and I'm and I'm glad you know because that that would have been a very traumatic experience for her to be a part of so um, I actually think I stopped, uh, the stream at that point. Yeah. I said, guys, I gotta go. I'll be back, whatever. Cause I wasn't going to give anybody the chance to see what was going on on the camera in case something went South. Anyway, came out, hands up, knew the deal. I'm like, it's this again, you know, and they're going, what again? I said, you know, look, you guys came here once before. I said, obviously something's happening. Um, what can I do about this? And you're like, well, you really, you know, if, if, if a 911 call comes in, we have to respond. I said, no, I get that. I said, but what can I do about this? Because obviously somebody is doing this. This is the second time it's happened to me within a month, right? So they talked about, yeah, you know, you can file a report. It probably won't go very far. It won't go anywhere, but, you know, see what you can do. So I, I realized like, okay, well, I, this is, it's, it's kind of like I'm going to war now, you know? Um, against something that is an, an injustice. And uh, so I, I, I took a very specific focus at my, uh, on my heathenry at the time to Tyr. Um, Tyr being, you know, very uh, clearly having ties to, you know, justice, right action, sacrifice, the, the, the greater good, right? So I'm like, I need to focus on tier. And so I got a, a, a pendant of, of a tier rune, Tiwaz, the Tiwaz rune, the Tiw rune. And, and I kept it around my neck ever since then. Um, the long story is short is that, you know, yes, I did file a report. I did speak to detectives. I did not get anywhere. I listened to 911 recordings of the both instances of when it happened. Couldn't recognize the voice, but basically said, okay, well, we did as much as we could do, but rest assured that um, this will not this will not deter me. This is not this is not stopping me from doing what I'm doing. Obviously, I'm still here. I've 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 streamed a whole lot since then. You know, this is this is nothing. You think you're going to scare me away from doing all this? You think you're going to try to, um, you know, strong arm me off of this platform? Whatever, uh, not going to happen. And so here I am, here I am still. Well, anyway. That Tiwa's rune, that that pendant, um, again, has not – I've never taken it off except to add, like, the bone and stuff to it. It's, it's a small piece of bone that I just added to the chain. Uh, so other than that, it's, it, I shower with it. I go in the river with it. I've, I've, I slept – I sleep with it. You know, it, it's always on me. And it's almost become just kind of like a – I don't even think about it being there. Well, this morning – when I woke up, you know, at the time of this recording, so Monday morning when I wake up, um, or before I actually wake up, I didn't even wake up to notice it was gone. I, I woke up in the middle of the night and I'm laying on my side and I just, I kind of like put my hand, you know, to, to 
where my chest is, but I didn't touch my chest. I just laid it there and right there on the bed between my wife and I, I felt dependent. And I was like, oh, it fell off, you know, like somehow, but I realized it couldn't fall off because it's, it's a loop that goes through the chain. I felt the chain was still on my neck. And as I, you know, in the dark, as I'm touching the rune pendant, I realized it broke off. I, I rolled, I did something anyway, it snapped and it broke off of the, of the chain. So, you know, I, I roll over, I put it on my nightstand and then go back to bed and whatever, but I like, this is interesting, you know? Now wake up the next day. I did a little, like, uh, what do you call them things like YouTube shorts or whatever, just to kind of put it out here as like a guys, this happened, right? What are your thoughts on it? And I wanted to get a poll from the community and just get a, a feedback from people. You know, I put it on my Facebook page on the, on the reels uh, feed. And then I put it on the YouTube channel on the shorts feed just to see what people would say about it. And I love all the responses that I got because some of the things that I got, some of the responses that I got were things that I hadn't quite really thought about. I'm a very practical and logical um, individual. And when things like this happen, I look at it usually from a very practical and logical perspective, right? Why did this happen? Why did the rune pendant that I you know, had as a dedication to, to a god break off from my neck and break away from my necklace? You know, Now, for some people, and I think the reason why I want to talk about this is that I think some people, um, rightly wrong and, or indifferent, will look at something like that and go, oh, no, I've fallen out of favor with the gods or I'm being abandoned by tear, you know, or, or something very like distinct or tragic like that. And while that may be a um, perspective to take, and while that may be something to think about, for me, in my case, that wasn't it, because I knew that it broke because um, I got the thing from Wish. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to try and fake anything of, of, of great quality. Like, I know where I got it from, and I know that I've worn it now for four years, probably close to four, four to five years. I'm, I'm guesstimating, but I mean, it's it's, you know, for something that I got off of, you know, uh off a of wish you know like surprisingly that it lasted as long as it has so that there's that you know i realize like hey you know it's 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 cheap material it's it's not meant to last forever it's it's obviously been through a lot i've i've showered with it i've gone in the river with it i've i've you know rolled over in my sleep with it i've i've put it through its 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 use you know what i mean it's 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 seen its days and it's that's it as far as a necklace goes so Again, from a very logical and practical standpoint, I said, all right, well, that's why it broke. But I'm also the type of person that looks at things that happen like this, you know, because it could have been the fish hook, right? It could have been the fish hook. I've, I've been wearing that for years now, too, and maybe not as long, but still, nonetheless, I mean, it's it's starting to, the, 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 the cord or whatever is starting to fray a little bit. I'm like, well, eventually that's probably going to fall apart, too. But this particular thing was the, the rune, and it was tears rune. So I just am like, well, I kind of think I might know maybe why, but I want to hear other people's thoughts. And again, just looking at it from a very practical and logical standpoint. Um, and I got some of that feedback, you know, people are like, well, you know, you, you broke, you, you know, uh, why did it happen is because it broke, you know, like, again, the, the, the literal reason why it's, it's worn out its use. And then some of the other uh, things that I got, um, some of the other, you know, responses that i got from one uh, one person as a matter of fact is um not heathen but he's who someone who i have had on the podcast before richard uh he's a brother to me his response uh as to you know what had happened yeah he, he his his thoughts were that um and i'm and i'm kind of like paraphrasing you know what he said was that You've been released from, the, you know, your, your your devotion is no longer required. You've been released from your, I don't know, service or, or so, as it were, to that particular God, you know. And uh, it, it's interesting because, like, I never would have considered myself to be a tearsman. You know how, like, you hear in some pagan circles that you're a Thorsman or you're an Odinsman or you're a, you know, Freyasman or you, whatever. I was never, I never quite consider myself to be a tearsman 
um, even though I've I've always really valued and admired the traits and and the and the characteristics and the lore behind Tyr, even the 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 stuff that goes back that predates the Viking Age and that predates the Eddas, right? To uh, to Tyr being the predominant sky god of the Germanic peoples across, you know, Northern Europe, that Tyr too. Um, and the various names across, you know, those cultures that predates and and is probably the origin of the All Father, that is that has become Odin or whatever. And and some of the the talks and and things that I've had about Tyr over the years, like it's very fascinating for me to to think about it all. And and so beyond that, like I've never, I have some pieces that are dedicated to Tyr. Like I have a blade that has his rune on it, um, uh, on my altar and the 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 rune necklace you know but in but in terms of like other items other things that i would i you know i don't have a lot and i never had a lot because i always felt like that was the thing that needed to be closest to me for those types of those things for the for the for the actions that i was seeking the 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 right action seeking justice you know regardless of the outcome what is the right action doesn't matter if it benefits me doesn't matter who it benefits it needs to benefit the overall collective right what is the overall good going to accomplish what do i need to sacrifice what do i need to learn and all this to achieve that greater good and that was the main thing about it and and so hearing richard say like well maybe you've been released of your devotion to tear your your devotion to tear is no longer needed and that's maybe a, a, a symbolically the rune breaking away from you is that you know um something else that was said um you know, and, and, and I, got, I got some other like, I don't know, um, ideas or thoughts from people about what to do with it. You know, well, you can always repurpose it, right? You can seal it and put it on your altar. You can um, bury it. I, I saw somebody say bury it by your hoger. Um, and there was one particular, there was one particular um, thing, though, that I did want to, to, to read. Um, and I'm going to find it because this one actually stood out aside from Richard's like this, this particular comment is the one that probably stood out to me the most. Um, so let me just find it real quick because this is worth it. It was on the Facebook reels. Um, let's see here. So many. Oh yeah, it protected you, um, and took the hit for you. This is this was this was a comment that somebody left so, uh, talking about the rune pendant, right? That it said he said that um, it it protected you and took a hit for you. Somebody um, may have been sending some sort of magical or or spiritual something against you. Um. And that, you know, this was like a test or, or something and that, it, you know, it, it broke away from you as as a thing of like, I took the hit and now it doesn't need to be a part of you anymore. You need to repurpose this. And I thought that that was very interesting because, again, it goes into some real like woo -woo <laughs> realms of, um, of of thinking. And um, again, I, I didn't I didn't deduce that 100 percent. And I think out of all the things that I've read and, and heard it, it aside from just the simplistic answer right it 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 happened because it was a weak you know trinket it, it wasn't good quality it was bound to happen at some point and that point happened to be you know then the 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 parts beyond it you know um i think one of the things that that probably stood out to me the most was that uh was what um was what richard said you know was that he thinks that you are no longer um what is he saying no longer needing your allegiance um and i don't know man like that 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 part is the is the thing that stood out to me is because um allegiances to gods how we as pagans different pagans different different paths 
how we dedicate whether it's our lives, whether it's our, our actions, spaces, our work, different things, right? What, how we dedicate things to or, or align ourselves to be in allegiance to a, to a deity. Um, again, tear was never one that I consciously like swore fealty to like as, as being like a tearsman, like I will give you X, Y, Z type so, sorts of gifts or, or whatever. But I have, you know, in my life and in my careers have nearly a decade worth of law enforcement or corrections background, right? Before I've been in, in the, the line of work that I'm in. And I did have a period of time that because of that, I felt like I could invoke tear and actually make a uh, make 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 enough noise for him to notice what I was trying to do. And so to hear the hear it said that, you know, it was like a gesture of your allegiance, your your attention to me is no longer required. And I'm sort of releasing myself from you and you from me. Focus on other things, right? It's not that it was I'm a, I'm forsaking you, I'm abandoning you, I'm I'm done with you because you didn't hold up your end of the bargain. It wasn't anything like that. It was like a physical breaking away of we're done with each other. You're you can focus on other parts. And that's really interesting because of the, some of the things that I have going on right now in my spiritual life, things that extend beyond my personal practices, my my individual cultic practices, things that now are going to extend beyond my inner hearth, right? Because of the growth of our tribe the progression of our tribe, the inclusion of the community beyond the tribe, like just so many things are happening that um, maybe the, maybe the focus or maybe the, the, the attention to tear. Cause again, being, it, uh, having it been around my neck for so long, it's like, you can't help but notice it. You know, you're showering, you're whatever it's, it's, you know, it's there. Well, it, that that visual that 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 physical reminder of it not being there almost um allows that space to be filled with other things and now the only thing that's there besides that fish hook is is the uh is the bone the elk bone which has um other members of our tribe that that own a similar or like piece my wife has one Law speaker has one like other people in the tribe have an identical or, or close enough to identical piece of elk bone. And it's like, now that's the only thing that I need to, to, to worry about as far as when I see it around my neck on the, on the, on the chain, you know? And uh, I don't know, it, it's, it, it kind of gave me, um, and it's still, you know, up to, up to this point now talking about it and talking through it gives me a lot of things to think about. Um, I do think it was interesting to, hear that one comment about you know taking a hit for me you know or being kind of almost like that deflector that that uh the thing that absorbed a potentially lethal blow or or whatever and that and that's very tear like you know what i mean like tears that is in the story is the one that takes the hit you know he's the one that that took it for the team again for the greater good um and again, I'm, I'm not I'm not delusional to think that that would be actual. You know what I mean? Like I don't think I'm anything worth a god <laughs> intervening for me on. Uh, but nonetheless, it's still an interesting concept to to think about. So whether you know whether it's that or or more like you know just and again, it could be nothing. But for me, I think it's 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 other things, and that's where it goes back to. You know, I've talked about before. Um, omens and signs you know and, and the reading of such things you know um somebody had made a comment on the uh, youtube channel uh because i posted it again on on the youtube channel as well same video same same short clip um uh you know someone had said you know that a raven showing up or raven showing up to people you know or crows or, or other animals you know things in the animal kingdom that are going to be there they're you know ravens fly wolves roam you know herons myself you know i've, I've talked about the heron uh plenty of times you know they they're going to do what they're going to do regardless of whether we see them or not 
So just because we see them, just because we, they 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 cross our path, just because we notice them, doesn't mean that there's something to be learned every single time. Um, but if it's something as profound as, let's say, you know, a crow or a raven or whatever, the animal approaches you or gets unusually close to you or or or, or, or performs some sort of gesture, you know, like I, I can remember the times with the heron, you know, um, being on the river and having the heron literally follow me, whether it's flying over me or or landing in a tree and then flying on down or getting in the water and walking ahead of me, like keeping a close watch, like those types of things. Like, yes, I think that those were meant for me to see and to, and to experience because I was in that moment, you know, so for, you know, others that have moments like that, definitely, you know, th those, those types of signs are meant for you and you alone. And they're not meant for, you know, just everybody. And, and the same thing goes for dreams. Same thing goes for something like this. What I'm talking about right now, it's, you know, could be nothing very well likely is. However, why do I feel a certain way about it? Well, it's probably because there was something else in it for me to ponder and to consider. And, you know, here are some things for you to consider. So have I nailed it down 100% exactly? No. Am I leaning a certain way when I when I think about how it felt and, and what it could potentially mean? Yes. You know, things that make just the sense that they make to me thinking about um, that side of things. Um, yeah, sure. And uh, I would, I would, uh, you know, I would encourage everybody that that has such things, you know, happen. Like, don't don't just shrug them off. Don't be nonchalant about uh, any sort of happenings that that you may encounter. You know, be open enough to, and be aware enough, and be awake enough to realize that it could be something, could be nothing. But if it is happening, what could be the the lesson? What could be the the point of it? What could I take out of this? you know, um, scenario, what could I take out of this moment to, uh, to benefit from or, or to learn from? And I almost guarantee you'll find something may not be earth shattering, may not be profound. Um, but it'll definitely be weird. And I mean that as in W Y R D, you know, weird, the web, how things are intertwined, how things, how, where we, where we find ourselves, in that whole cosmic dynamic, right? Um, it's definitely a thing. And we are we are parts of, of many things and many things are part of us. And so when we have these moments and when we have these experiences, it would behoove us not to uh, pay attention and, and learn as much as we can from it all. So there you go. There's There's my breakdown of a seemingly simple, you know, again, could I have woken up in the middle of the night? Like that's that's kind of what really still stands out to me is that I could have just it could have broken. I could have woken up that morning to go, you know, get ready for work and not have noticed it, not have seen it until much later on. But I literally woke up before I needed to in the pitch black dark of the room lay my hand to, next to my chest, not on my chest. Like, I mean, I was laying on my side. So, you know, like I lay it on the bed and boom, there it is. It's, it's on the bed right next to me. Like that's, that's what made me want to be like, okay, let me set this out of the bed and then I'm going to think about this, you know? And I, I think I doze back off to sleep or at least some sort of state of, um, you know, semi-conscious state. I don't think I, went hundred percent back to sleep, but it was, uh, it was, it was something that stayed in my mind and on my heart. And that's significant. Again, if it, if it had been the other way around where I just, you know, noticed it, Oh, wow. I, you know, it broke off and I didn't notice it was gone. Maybe I would have been a different thing to learn from, or, or it wouldn't have been as impactful or profound of an experience for me. The thing that made it as profound as it was, um, is that I, I woke up out of a sleep for no other apparent reason and just had it laying right there and, and, and I put my hand on it and there it was. You know, so all the things, everything from that moment on um, and, and getting some other people's feedback, you know, hearing about it, hearing what other people thought, um, 
it was great. And I appreciate everybody that has and have mentioned something about it or given me their thoughts. So if this is your first time hearing about this, let me know. Put it in the comments section of the YouTube video, right into the podcast, Midgard Musings, TN at gmail.com. Let me hear your thoughts. Call in, leave a voicemail. Let me know what your thoughts are about all this. And um, if you're, you know, unless you don't want me to, just let me know in the voicemail. But I will, I will put your thoughts on the next uh, Random Heathen Ramblings podcast episode. We can hear your voice on this podcast and, you know, uh, you know, hear what it is that you have to say about it all. Maybe, maybe there's uh, some things that between now and then, that haven't manifested themselves and your thoughts kind of shed a light on the whole thing. You know, I would love to hear that. I would love to hear from all of you um, that want to. So call in, write in, tweet about it. Tag me on Facebook. Um, I finally figured out the whole Instagram thing. Like my, my, because of the whole like Facebook meta, like updates, they, 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 they make so many updates and they run so many things that the thing that worked at one point now all of a sudden after an update doesn't work anymore. I've been noticing a lot of challenges with responding back to messages on Facebook comments being hidden. Um, so if you have written into to me through the Facebook page, through, through, through a DM and I haven't responded, it's not because I'm ignoring you. It's because the Facebook app or the meta business suite app or whatever it is that I use to respond to those things is glitching or acting up. And so it may take me a while until I get back to like my computer and, and stuff to, to respond to you. So it's not because I'm ignoring you. It's just that the technology is, is acting all wonky. Um, but uh, yeah, so I think the Instagram thing is finally figured out at least where I can post pictures. I did post a video last week and it's upside down. Don't ask me why. Don't know why it just did it. So anyway, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tag me, at me, uh, tweet about whatever there's the conversation. I would love for this to kind of get circulated around and, and feel free to, you know, hashtag Midgard Musings or just tag me um, when you send, when, when, when you share. It. And um, yeah, it would be great to, to see this kind of engagement going on. So again, um, that's, I say again, but that's about all I had to talk about today without um, Trevor being here. So no worries on that, Trevor, if you're watching or listening to this, we'll get you on here. Uh, soon and we'll talk about stuff but in the meantime um i do have a guest coming on next next week next podcast um really excited um to have him on i'm not going to reveal who that is just yet but stay tuned for um information to come out on that before uh that podcast drops next week um saying so in the coming weeks there's there's the shadow mood event so check the description or show notes for uh those details um and if you're coming out to Shadow Moot, you'll see me and you'll see my wife. We're going to be there at least Saturday through Saturday night camping over. We may even be showing up uh, Friday and camping over that night, too. So remains to be seen. We shall see. Um, but yes, thank you all so much for tuning into this week's podcast. If you like it, please be sure to engage with the podcast or the video in a way that reflects that give this video a thumbs up share it around drop your comments leave some feedback retweet share all the fun ways that you can engage with the algorithm gods and appease them uh, don't forget to check the link tree link in the description and show notes of every episode for all the ways that you can support midgard musings and the random heathen ramblings podcast there's the social media stuff there's patreon there's merchandise uh, there's buy me a coffee there's donations through paypal there's all sorts of ways that you can uh, support and help with what I do here um, in any way that you feel inclined and 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 uh, you know inspired to do so. It is always greatly appreciated. So until we talk again, my friends, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for your support. May the gods continue to notice you, and may your ancestors smile upon you. <laughs>